the people that love and respect and honor and fear Helen um, in, the, in this country uh, are significant. Uh, President Obama sent a statement, Helen Thomas will always hold a special place in my heart. As a fearless interrogator of 10 presidents, Helen has never let anyone get away with dodging a question or giving an unsatisfactory answer. A fact I learned very quickly. Helen is, tr Helen is truly one of a kind and we are grateful for all her years of dedicated service. This town wouldn't be the same without Helen. Marlon Fitzwater, White House Press Secretary 87 393. I still love Helen for her heart. She always cared about other people and about journalism with unsurpassed passion. I always listened to her screams about the White House rules, about pools and lids and deadlines, news management, openness, and the meaning of public service in a free society. These are still important to the way these two great institutions, the press and the presidency, treat each other, and they are only a fraction of all the reasons for honoring her tonight. Bob Schieffer, CBS News. Helen Thomas is the first reporter I met when I came to Washington in 69, and I have yet to meet a better one. Gloria Story Dennis, the chairman of Story Partners. There is not a woman in Washington who hasn't benefited in some way from the trail she has blazed. It's an honor to share in her celebration. Robert Gibbs, the current White House Press Secretary. What sometimes gets less attention is the impact she has at the White House day in and day out. Whatever the news of the hour, I know that Helen's questions will set the tempo for how the story is covered. In this era of extraordinary challenges, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the 24-hour news cycle, profusion of news outlets, the ability to break and analyze news. But one constant in the din is the professionalism and razor-sharp curiosity that Helen brings to the briefing room every day. Mike McCurry, White House Press Secretary uh, for President Clinton, 95 to 98. And I, I did talk to Mike, he's, he's at a college visit with his kids, but he said, why are you honoring her? Why are you honoring her? Because she kept all of us honest? Because she sat there in the office at 7 a.m. every day asking us what the news would be before we even got her coffee and a donut? Do you admire her unfailing ability to ask a pointed question that strips every answer bare of spin and dissemblance? Do you appreciate her incredible work ethic and willingness to show up every day for duty? Or do you just like her because she's cute? <laughs> there are probably a hundred good reasons to give Helen this award, and I would agree with every one of them. Just don't tell anybody. Yeah. Rory Kennedy, uh, who directed Thank You, Mr. President, Helen Thomas at the White House for HBO. I will always remember the weekend Helen and I spent at my mother's home, just the two of us, cameras and crew. Helen took me through her years as a White House correspondent, starting when my uncle, President John F. Kennedy, was in office. Helen told me that at one particular press conference, she realized my uncle was struggling. Using the phrase that became her signature in the title of our film, Thank You, Mr. President, she jumped in and ended the press conference, much to my uncle's relief. In January of 2009, I watched as Helen repeated the same phrase to President Barack Obama, the 10th president to which she's had a front row seat. And finally, Sam Donaldson, ABC News. You stand for health, you, you, you stand for truth and justice too, in all things good and great. But pray now, come clean. When you joined the press room scene and met young JFK, did he steal a kiss from this young miss? And truly did it make your day? We'll never know, but uh, now to present Helen with her much deserved award is my good friend, our leader, uh, the long uh, uh, active, the long struggling, the, the long persevering uh, Sarah Brady. It's great to see so many of you guys here, so many old friends, some of which I haven't seen for 25, 35 years, and to welcome you new ones. You know, over the years, I've had the honor and the pleasure of introducing a lot of people, even several presidents during Bill signing. <clears throat> but I don't think there's ever been one that was more heartfelt than the one I'm going to do tonight. It is just such a pleasure, such a thrill to honor Helen. What a life and what a career this woman has had. You know, she graduated from Wayne State University out there in the Midwest, and she started out as a copy girl, copy boy which I'm sure you changed quickly, for the Washington Daily News. And then, of course, joined um, United Press International. As you know, during the Kennedy years, she became so well-known 
for the being the first woman who closed a presidential news conference with the traditional, thank you, Mr. President. And how many times over the years have we heard her say those words? They're like part of us. Helen is best known for her t extreme tenacity in getting the story, but getting it right. Jim first learned that when Helen would come tapping on his window in the West Wing early, early in the morning before anybody was around. And Jim would say, woman, do you have no shame? <laughs> and Helen would say, of course not. And they'd share morning tea. I'm sure every press secretary in preparing for their daily press briefings would think, now what is Helen going to ask today? Not being afraid to ask the tough questions, to poke and to pry and to get the truth has probably made her the finest generation of, finest journalist of our generation. I wouldn't say Helen was a thorn in the side of every administration. But then, I think she was probably a constant itch, that kind you just can't get to. A former president of the Women's National Press Club, Helen went on to pave the way for women in every part of our lives. I want to give you just a few of her precedents. When the National Press Club first after 90 years, decided it might allow a woman to join, Helen was the first. And she became the first woman officer. She became the first woman officer of the White House Correspondents Association after 50 years. And then she became the first president. She became the first woman member of the Gridiron Club and moved on there to become its president. You know, I've got a little secret that maybe some of you know, but Helen grew up dreaming of either being a journalist or a torch singer. And I'm going to tell you, after seeing Helen perform at the Gridiron many times, she would have been a smash as a torch singer. She has accumulated more than 40 degrees and received awards too numerous to even mention. What an honor. This is somebody in your lifetime that is just a great honor to meet. And I am just so excited that I could give her just one more of those damn awards, as we used to say. Thank you.